for Rebecca Robert. All right, no answer. Okay. Um, so we have uh, a petition here uh, on behalf of Ms. Hobson <clears throat> for a protection order against Rebecca Robert. Um, there was no temporary emergency order granted in this case. I think if I'm reading this correctly, that the, the, the um, petitioner has obtained a service on the respondent. Is that right, Mr. Landis? Yes, Your Honor, that's correct. That occurred last week. Okay. Was that on the signature of the process server is the 22nd, so on Friday? It was on Wednesday. I believe it was on, yeah, Wednesday. The actual service was on uh, Wednesday, okay. 20th. Gotcha. All right. So then uh, I guess we have a, you have a choice here of how you'd like to proceed with this. So there's been no response yet. Uh, I guess we're at 9 12 here, and the time of the calendar was 9 o'clock. All right. Do you, uh, do you want me to reset this to a later calendar and you can attempt to give her notice for that calendar? Your Honor, uh, I think Your Honor has <clears throat> authority to grant at least uh, a two week protective order on an ex parte basis. And given the fact that the defendant was not only served by a professional process server uh, last week, but also that my client <clears throat> notified uh, defendant uh, by text message previously to that and got no response whatsoever to that. Under the circumstances, we would think that a, that a two week protective order would be in place, <clears throat> uh, would be appropriate. And then uh, another hearing could be set at the end of that period. Okay, Judge Meyer already heard that petition for an emergency order and denied it. And there aren't any other facts or new facts alleged since J Judge Meyer made that determination. So that's the law of the case. So there won't be an emergency order. Um, however, I, I will reset the case in order for you to attempt uh, service on her again. Uh, if that's your honor's decision, uh, uh, I would hope that we could reset it at the earliest possible time. Okay, and I'll, I'll check with the clerk. And then am I correct that the small claims case between the parties is still pending for trial? Yes, Your Honor, that's pending on this Friday. This Friday, okay, so I'll probably see both of them then. All right, um, All right. so let's look for, uh, we do these every Monday at 9 a.m. The calendar commences at 9 a.m., so uh, what do we got, Kayla? But we're not going to set those unless we check the calendar first and see how much is already on there. Yes, there's only two of them first. Okay. All right. How do you feel about April 1st? That'd be fine, uh, Your Honor. Uh, let me check with my client to make sure that works for her. Sure. Yes. Okay. So April 1st then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we reset the matter to April 1st at 9. It's a continuance, but again, since we weren't sure, uh, I knew he was going to be here, but he advised me to come to just tell you that in person. Okay. And, and, great. Yeah. Great. All right. So yeah, Ms. Uh, Robert, okay. I want to, I, I want to make sure that you uh, are as up to speed as, as I am on this, that uh, Mr. Landis had filed and I'm looking for the exact date. It was last week. He had filed a, a motion to continue the hearing in this case. Um. Yes, your honor. I did see that. I you also that? read it that he said that I was not in attendance and that I had been served and that's actually not true, but um, I'm out of the state as well. I'm taking care of my daughter. She's sick. She had surgery. Um, and I managed to prepare a response and provide all the exhibits. So while we're all here, maybe we could just continue. Okay. Yeah. As much as I would also like to do that. Um, I think that it would be, I think it would be the wrong decision to just to, to insist on going ahead with the substance of the hearing, given that, you know, Mr. Landis has come on board with this case and, you know, if it were just the two of you, I would ha not hesitate to do that. But as an attorney, Mr. Landis has obligations to, you know, he has to be prepared to represent his client. He has to be able to give a level of service that's expected under the rules of professional conduct. And it would not be uh, fair to anybody to just either decide the case without him, of course, wouldn't be correct. But to insist that, you know, this be done immediately uh, is also not the correct answer. So I, I am going to grant his request to continue. The hearing i don't think there's any prejudice to anybody because there isn't any order in existence so nobody's having to live under the restrictions of an order that may only be temporary so miss hobson i am going to have to ask you uh did uh, mr landis uh give you an idea of future dates um i believe he we expected to be a week from today but i i'm pretty sure um he can make himself available this was a really hard time constraint but i um 
I think since the last time it was one week from today that maybe we thought that since you do things at certain times that it would be. Yeah. Well, he does say he, he would be oh. available April 8th. Let me have the clerk check our calendar here. How is April 8th? Look, that's next Monday. I'm unfortunately not available. I'm flying back from Alabama on the 8th, Your Honor. Okay. So you're not. Okay. Fair enough. That's pretty short notice. What, what about uh, the 15th? Is open. 15th? That's the next Monday. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, then, Ms. Robert, the 15th. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm working. I have a pretty busy schedule the rest of the month. If it's, can we set it out into May where I don't have clients booked? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. And like I said, there's no order, no temporary order. So there's, there's no reason that can't happen. What does May look like? May 6th. Okay. May 6th. Okay. Ms. Hobson. Thank you. Okay, we'll reset for May 6th. No further service is necessary by either party. You're both here and on notice. Um, we will see everybody in attendance on May 6th at 9 a.m. Present. Uh, and uh, Mr. Robert is present and Mr. Landis is present, uh, all of those by Zoom. So Ms. Robert, Mr. Robert and uh, Ms. Hobson, raise your right hands for me, please. Thank you. All right, uh, I know I saw the parties on Friday in regards to the appeal of the small claim ruling. And I had told you at the time, I knew you were coming into court today. I had previously reviewed the petition uh, in this case. And so I am familiar with the issues raised. Uh, Ms. Hobson, Mr. Landis is serving as your counsel. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, frankly, I don't, I'll just ask, um, well, since you're represented by counsel, I'll go through Mr. Landis. Mr. Landis, as I've indicated, I've read uh, Ms. Hobson's petition, I've reviewed the other documents, and also uh, reviewed the response uh, from Ms. Robert and associated documents. Do you have any other factual testimony you wish to have elicited prior to making argument in this case? Uh, I don't believe so, Your Honor. If Your Honor has any particular questions or if something comes up in, uh, from Ms. Roberts' testimony or Mr. Roberts' testimony, uh, we'd like an opportunity to respond if need be. But I think the record is pretty complete in terms of the evidence that we have filed. All right. Thank you. And I mean, both parties have filed fairly extensive evidence, and I have reviewed it. So I just want to indicate that to the parties. All right, Ms. Robert, do you have anything you want to add that's in addition to what you have already filed? Um, I just, there was new evidence presented and I quickly responded. Okay, you're going to need to really speak up because you're coming in very soft. Okay, can you hear me better? That is better, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, the response filed by the petitioner um, just a few days ago, I attempted to respond to rather quickly, um, but they brought up new um, questions regarding why we hadn't filed any additional or served them with any additional official notices um, that, from the property manager. And um, she's here as a witness, just in case that's even relevant. Okay, and is that Ashley or Kylie? That's Rachel Taylor. Rachel, I'm sorry. Okay, I bet I know Ashley and Kylie. Okay, uh, and so nothing else factually, Ms. Robert? No, I presented okay. everything. All right, thank you. And Mr. Landis, uh, on behalf of the petitioner, your argument. And once again, I read your declaration that you had filed recently. Thank you, Your Honor, and I appreciate you coming through the record as fairly long uh, and voluminous. Um, the, I, I think just to, to simplify and cut to the, to, to the key elements here, the, uh, the respondent doesn't deny that there was electronic surveillance of both of my client's children and at least six of their friends uh, on multiple occasions. The justifications uh, that she provides don't don't really hold water. Um, primarily, the law does not immunize unwanted surveillance 
uh, or monitoring or tracking, even if it's on a public or open uh, portion of a social media site. The key is whether that monitoring and tracking makes someone, adult or child, feel frightened, intimidated, or threatened. In fact, the worksheet for the protective order petitions that the court issues makes that clear. It, it specifies three questions that a petitioner has to answer. One is whether the other person has contacted, attempted to contact, monitor, or track, keep up, uh, kept un under observation, or follows you, number one. Number two, that the behavior happened two or more times. And number three, you feel intimidated, frightened, or threatened. And in fact, the respondent does not contest that my client's children felt intimidated and threatened. Uh, and in fact, the same is true of the six uh, other children, minor uh, uh, children, teenagers, uh, that were contacted multiple times on the social media sites. One of them, in fact, uh, made it clear that uh, Ms. Robert had done it again, and it was actually scary. And what concerns us in this case is that even after Ms. Robert was notified by my client of uh, the concern to her children and uh, a request that it stop, and even after my client notified her other landlord, Ms. Robert's husband, at, at length about the concern that she had and the concern for her children's well-being, uh, there was no response whatsoever. Not at all. No shred of concern has ever been uh, exhibited by the respondent uh, for that issue, which is really the key to a protective order. Uh, in addition, um, the respondent did try to contact or access the private sites of uh, several times, not just once, several. Once in April 2023, uh, she attempted to access the private portion of uh, Juliet, my client's daughter, uh, her social media site on Instagram. She was blocked. Then earlier this year, okay, she that, tried- Mr. Landis, let me, let me interrupt just to, so we can make sure the record's clear. And by access, you mean by submitting a request to uh, either in friend and Facebook or I can't remember what they call it on Instagram, but it, right. you, ha you have to file a friend request, essentially. And that's what you're referring to? Yes, Your Honor. That's essentially right. OK. All right. Go ahead. And so that happened uh, twice, as far as we know, uh, to Juliet. Uh, and, that, and the second time was earlier this year on a different social media platform called Snapchat. And in that same week, uh, Ms. Robert requested access, again, requested being a friend to one of uh, Juliet's very good friends, uh, Lauren, also on Snapchat. So uh, the, the key here is that this happened multiple times. There is no defense that it was only on uh, an open portion. That isn't something that the law immunizes. And finally, and most importantly, it caused emotional distress, considerable emotion to, emotional distress to my client's children and her friends and my client and her husband as well. All right. Thank you, Mr. Landis. And Ms. Roberts. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. <clears throat> um, I'd just like to respond kind of point by point. I absolutely have not attempted to contact in any way these youth. I have not messaged them, emailed them. I have only viewed the profiles. It's, as I said in my answer, it's possible that um, the on Snapchat, the follow button is rather large. And when you're on your phone, it's super easy to hit a follow request and attempt to follow that person. It's not like a friend request, it's just, Snapchat doesn't even have like, it's a messaging platform. It's not really, as far as I'm aware, it's not like stuff that you you don't post things. 
Um, and I have no need to be friends with these kids. I have no need to message these kids. I start, I was just screenshotting the evidence as I saw it on social media of parties at our house, things involving our house and multiple children, multiple youth that are at the house are simultaneously posting, hey, you know, here's a selfie. We're at a party in the backyard. Here we are with all of our friends of like 25 and 30 kids. And the petitioner had previously been put on notice that this was absolutely unacceptable in our property. And, you know, they're climbing in the trees, they're dancing on the roof. And so I just merely was trying to document the evidence of the lease violations and the shenanigans that were ongoing. I've never contacted anybody. I've never messaged anybody. Um, I've never followed anybody, attempted to follow anybody. We live two hours away. Um, I'm not dry, you know, we're not at the house while they were living there trying to monitor the comings and goings. I have third party reports coming to me from the neighbors who I know because we lived in that home for several years and they are telling me, Hey, there's another party at your house. There's another thing happening. There's cars lining the street. I've produced multiple pieces of evidence, um, of the documentation that came from social media that came from public open social media. So I have no reason or desire to be contacting these, these kids. And for that matter, for the, um, you know, or, or anyone related friends, whatever. Um, so I just, and I don't believe that they're afraid because all their social media um, things are public. If they're afraid, they'd make them all private. They're all public. They post it out. They post stuff out there because they advertise parties online and they want everyone to see what they're up to. It's part of that, you know, youth culture, but it requires, you know, in my opinion, it requires parenting to say, gee, what are you putting out on social media? And what does that say about you and what you're doing? And, you know, when they're posting photos with, you know, beer cans in hand, it's, you know, it's evident what's going on. And I merely was trying to document that for our own purposes, because these people were renting our home. And um, over the course of three years have, there is extensive damage to our home. And it's, it's kids running amok and um, just, people not taking care of things, people claiming no responsibility for damages, for, for behaviors, um, even though they say in an email, yes, I'll make sure, I'll make sure. Okay, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the small claims court, so I'm not going to get into the issue of I understand. damage and responsibility. The line's definitely clear. All right, so Ms. Robert, uh, You'd indicated that you had made no attempts to contact them, but I saw screenshots of at least two friend requests. Um, so to me, that seems like a, a desire to contact or to get access to private uh, displays. Of, which screenshots are you referring to? So I well, your know. name appears on a couple. It just That's just that I viewed the profile or that I viewed the open profile, not that I was attempting to be a friend. And I think they're the same one, even though they're listed separately. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, my understanding is those are friend requests where you're asking to participate in their particular postings. <laughs> I, I don't know that that automatically happens if you just log in There's and look at their site. For, for Snapchat, that's the one I think was inadvertent. Like you can just press you can just be scrolling on your phone and accidentally hit the blue bar because it goes all the way across and that and that then sends a follow request. It's not an, it's not a message. It's not a anything. It's and okay. it wasn't. It was inadvertent. It wasn't on purpose. My my phone is fairly small, and you know it's easy to accidentally hit it. I guess when you're when you're looking at the at the open profile, like it's a public profile. Anyone can look at it. And then to accidentally hit the follow button is something that is very easy to do and wasn't done intentionally. Um, the exhibit four is the only one I see where there's a request. The rest of them just say that I viewed the profile along with 
multiple other people who are also not friends who have viewed the profile. That's all I see, one accidental on Snapchat. On exhibit. Exhibit four. When it says follow next to it and it's red, that's you press that button on TikTok if you want to follow that person's TikTok. That was not what I was doing. I, I never clicked that. If I did, it would say follow back. Um, exhibit three and exhibit four are exactly the same incident. So it shows exhibit three that I added someone on Snapchat and then I chose an exhibit four, except, you know, added, except for, that's the same situation that happened one time and it was accidental. And it was a year ago when I was first looking at all the social media, trying to determine what was going on at our house because of the. Okay, and exhibit six. Exhibit six. Exhibit six just shows that profile views there's two exhibit sixes. One says 907 at the top, and it just shows that I viewed a, a profile. It doesn't even show whose profile I viewed. And the second exhibit six shows 108 at the top. And that again, just shows that I viewed a profile, not that I attempted to follow them. Just that I- Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Landis, you get the last word. Your Honor, uh, as my client's declaration uh, and her initial petition uh, makes clear, uh, there were multiple attempts uh, to access, but 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 uh, not only of uh, her children, but at least one of the friends. As you can imagine, it is uh, the only way to capture that evidence is if the child at the time takes a screenshot. Uh, of of the uh, uh, of the attempt and uh, what we provided were examples and it's not exhaustive. Uh, I'm relying on the declaration of my uh, client and certainly if it becomes uh, an issue, we can ask each of the other friends, uh, the other uh, minors, to submit declarations. Um, but I think the the important thing here is that. Whether it's on a public, whether she accessed a public portion of the site or tried to get access into the private portion, uh, the law makes no distinction between the two. The law forbids unwanted surveillance, even if it's through, uh, you know, peering through a, a binoculars on somebody's uh, sidewalk or a public park or following them. It's that there is no uh, distinction that the law makes that requires. Uh, actual intended access to a private portion of a social media site. But Your Honor, I would like to make a suggestion about how I think we can resolve this dispute fairly readily, uh, if Your Honor is willing to hear that. Go ahead. The, my client and her family uh, have moved out of the house. The tenancy is over, uh, and so the justification that Ms. Robert has provided uh, to previous monitoring uh, of the social media sites, um, whether or not it was legitimate at the time, it, it, it is no longer uh, any reason whatsoever to conduct any uh, observation of public or attempted private sites. Uh, and, and so if Ms. Robert simply um, promises here in court not to continue the behavior, not to do it again, uh, and apologizes for any emotional distress that has been caused to these children, uh, then we will withdraw the request for the protective order. All right, thank you. And Ms. Robert, do you want to respond? Yes, Your Honor, there is one more thing I wanted to respond to, and that is, you know, we actually hired a property manager. For right. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Just with 
Mr. Landis has indicated there'll be a withdrawal of petition for an order. Uh, if you're indicating you have no desire to further contact the parties. I agree, Your Honor. I have no desire. The only contact I'm going to need to have is with the parents, and that's regarding damages to our home. Your Honor, yeah. hey, Your Honor, on. may I say something? Only because of the fact that in regards to this situation, I feel that the testimony from us is actually super important because there is a piece in, in regards to what Greg is saying um, in regards to his request for her to cease those, those things because they're out of the property. I would like to state that um, the Roberts actually came and hired management because they wanted no further contact with them due to the fact that the harassment but from what... Well, uh, the only reason I feel like this is somewhat Ms. Taylor, hold on. Ms. Taylor, hold on. What's your relationship here? Are you one of the property managers? Yeah, and the reason I feel it's somewhat relevant is because... Okay, I'll, I'll decide whether I need the... You're the, one of the property managers? Yeah, and the owner of Pettit Property Management, yes. Okay, so do you agree that uh, Ms. Hobson and her family have moved out? They have vacated the property, correct. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, so I've heard Ms. Thank you. I've heard Ms. Robert indicate that she has no further uh, interest uh, interest in contacting uh, the children of uh, Ms. Hobson, uh, either directly or indirectly, and uh, obviously, uh, and Ms. Taylor is the one responsible for closing up the property and moving it along. I can't imagine any interest you would have in the activities of the children going forward. Is that accurate? Ms. Taylor, is that accurate? That would be accurate. My concern is that Greg Landis has actually told the tenants, even though they have vacated, and multiple correspondents since we took over, that we are not the point of contact. And they refuse to go through us and keep going to the Roberts okay. directly due to his, um, and I have written proof, his direction. Okay, all right, all right. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. That's why I'm I think not, it's important. I'm not gonna get into that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Landis is their attorney, is representing them, and he'll take actions he believes is appropriate. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to note the withdrawal of the petition uh, by uh, Ms. Hobson and indicate that uh, Ms. Robert has agreed not to reach out to uh, the children. And this doesn't, you know, This doesn't create a barrier to the parties, the adult parties contacting each other in regards to the current ongoing dispute over the tenancy and any damages that may have resulted therefrom and the return of the deposit, those things, those issues are issues that adults are fully capable of handling through the processes that uh, are created. And that would be the expectation. Uh, I will say, uh, frankly, that this was going to be the result uh, in my mind, whether uh, Mr. Landis had suggested it or not, because uh, I do think uh, that hosting things uh, in public arenas is basically inviting observation. Uh, so uh, as I suspect lots of landlords review public postings of tenants to make sure that uh, what they're saying uh, is appropriate. If people want what they're doing not to be observed publicly, uh, they probably ought to take more precaution. You know, who else does this? Uh, law enforcement does it. The number of convictions that are obtain when somebody posts things online and you know i wasn't there but then it shows them there with the knife or the gun in the hand you know whatever uh you know else uses it schools uh kids applying to college uh what what are they like colleges peruse their social media all over the place looking to see what what are they really like so it's a fairly common thing and the expectation these days uh, and this is coming from somebody me who i am on no social media uh, so for a very intended purpose, uh, but those who decide to put themselves on social media are opening themselves to observation by folks way beyond their intended audience if they put it public. And so there just ought to be caution and Ms. Hobson sitting right in front of me and she's hearing me say this. And um, I, I'm just indicating that from where I sit, um, that would be, I would hesitate to restrict people's ability to observe what is appearing in front of them directly. Now, I also agree that since the tenancy is ended here, uh, there would be no basis for 
um, Ms. Robert uh, or Mr. Robert, or in fact, Ms. Taylor and the uh, agency that is administering the property uh, to then peruse uh, anything going on with the kids, unless somehow they show up back at the property having a big party or whatever. Uh, but beyond that, they should not uh, be observed in their you know, social media gathering. That would then indicate to me a surveillance that's going on because there's no uh, reasonable issue that uh, either the Roberts or Ms. Ms. Taylor would have in the activities of the Hobson family. So I will sign the denial order with that understanding uh, that uh, there will be no further um, looking at the public media of at least the children uh, of uh, Ms. Hobson. And uh, the parties as adults can continue uh, in a, their attempts to resolve the legal issues that have previously been before the court and I know we're now moving on to uh, an appellate review. Can I ask All right, you? and Mr. Landis, I'll sign an order to this effect and it'll be available in the district court file uh, for the parties and same for the uh, Ms. Robert. I'll Thank sign you, a denial order. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. We appreciate your guidance in this matter. All right. Well, thank you all. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I see Mr. You're, point. You're you. here, and I don't see Mr. Emick. Let me look and see if we've gotten any response from him. Sure. I see. I see service on. Well, we received it on the 25th. I I have to check and make sure which when it was actually served as proof of service. Yeah. 19th, 20th. Yep. All right. So it looks like that would have been uh, sufficiently in advance of the hearing. All right. Let me see the order, Chase. Thank you. All right. So, Ms. Pierpoint, you had filed a request. Um, you had filed a request to modify the order that was previously granted on the 11th, and it was specifically with regard to some um, surveillance cameras that your uh, motion refers to, and you provide some supporting documentation about the cameras, their presence, their orientation, and so forth, and that they intrude into the privacy of your home. Um, I'm looking at the looking at the order here, and um, it occurs to me that the clearest. Bear with me here a second. The, the modification of the restraint provisions of the order that you're requesting seem to be the would be to do with surveillance. And I yes, you're on. Yeah, we've had the Thurston County Sheriff's Office out here and they, they did file a report and they've also forwarded their report to the prosecuting attorney's office after they felt they found probable cause for stalking. Um, we just continue to have issues. It's really ramped up with him um, since the um, order was put in place on March 11th. We've um, also noted in the report he is using the ATVs and quads um, to ride up and down the property. Um, Sheriff's Deputy Warnock, I guess he best described it in his March 17 notes as unreasonably loud. And he noted that they're specifically targeting our property line and revving their engines, you know, within 16 feet or so of our house. And so we've just um, really been experiencing some retaliation from him and he just continues to escalate this behavior, unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to provide for <clears throat> the modification of the order. Thank you, Your Honor. It, uh, added a modification provision to the existing order, uh, specifically addressing the issue of uh, video surveillance. Um, this uh, order, modified order, is going to need to be served on Mr. Immick since the specific provision was not contained in the petition to modify the order. So I've directed that the Thurston County Sheriff's Office will serve a copy of this uh, modified order on Mr. Emick. Okay, thank you very much, Your Honor. All right, the court clerk will file that here shortly and it'll be available later, later today. Okay, thank you very much for your help. I appreciate it. Right. Thank you, Ms. Pierpoint. Yes, yeah. Okay, and um, as a preliminary matter here, um, you may have other preliminary matters too, but my, my preliminary matter is in reviewing the petition, um, it looks to me like this case could very well be a property dispute and not a uh, anti-harassment situation. Uh, and if that, of course, were to be the case, <clears throat> the district court wouldn't have jurisdiction to hear and decide that issue. That would have to be done as a different kind of action in the superior court. So that, that's my preliminary issue. And, and the parties may have others, certainly, if you want to 
Mr. Rayberger, do you have any preliminary issues? Well, I guess the only thank you, Your Honor, Joe Rayberger for Thomas Herrick. Um, if, if the court was inclined to take up this petition today, I think my we filed a motion to continue this. Um, I don't know if you've got a proof of or return of service in your file, but um, Dr. Herrick was only served Thursday afternoon, just before 5 p.m. So we just were made aware of this. Um, there are certain allegations um, regarding past events within the petition that I think the court would benefit from some additional details and perspective on if they were going to if you were going to take this up. There is prior litigation between the parties, and I'll note that those involved orders of anti-harassment entered against the Metzes and in favor of the Herrick family. Um, there's a, as you know, there's a shared access road here. Um, there was also litigation over a spite fence, which then was required to be corrected. So I think there is there is some additional context here. We've requested a public records request for the incident report surrounding this one, and we'd, we'd like want to make sure the court has that full information before the court takes this matter up. Okay, and I do have your uh, motion to continue that was filed uh, on Friday, noting the um, service, uh, the, the, the basically it was short service. Okay, so on that issue, Ms. Metz, which is the motion by uh, Mr. Rayberger to continue the case, uh, do you have any position on that? Uh, well, Your Honor, um, I, I do feel that um, I, I would really appreciate having the uh, protection and anti-harassment order also continue then. And I also have additional evidence um, and I do not feel that this is at all a matter of um, property. Uh, it is um, the fence that was involved in this particular incident was on our property. And, um, and as a, a result of all of this, um, I am having to have the entire fence replaced at considerable cost. Uh, it certainly isn't going to cost Mr. Herrick anything. So uh, I would I would wish that- Ms. Um, Metz, I'm gonna ask you to focus on my, my question, which was the, the request by Mr. Rayberger, which is to continue the hearing so that for the reasons that he gave so that he can get prepared for it. Do you, do you have any position on that? I would just request that, yes, that is fine with me but I would appreciate it if the protection and anti-harassment order could continue as well. Okay, the, there was not an order granted by this court. Um, if there are any orders by any other courts, they're unaffected by this decision. Okay. Um, so Mr. Rayberger, how much time did you think you needed for this? Thank you. I don't think we need much time, Your Honor. I haven't conferred with my client about his availability. I know I'm unavailable the week of April 1st, so anytime after that, the next one was the 8th, right? Yes. Okay, how about April 8th? My only concern would be getting documents pulled entire for us to file those a week before the hearing, So, which would mean we would need to get those in this week. I don't have any concerns about the 8th. I think we can get that done. All right. All right, well, let, let's uh, do that then. We'll reset the matter to April 8th at 9 a.m. 7-6. Okay, and we had previously continued this case in order for uh, everybody to get ready to uh, file uh, documents to use as part of the decision in the case. It looks like some additional documents were filed, and I have reviewed all of them. So I've reviewed the petition and the statements provided in that. I've reviewed the response and the uh, attachments that were provided there, and uh, I am probably about ready to issue a ruling based on the pleadings and filings. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to give each party a chance to make any additional statements or um, any additional arguments that they would like to make, starting with you, Ms. Metz, because you're the petitioner. Okay. The microphone right there in front of you is going to allow Mr. Rayberger and Mr. Herrick to hear you. So okay. you do your best to speak right into that. And uh, you all let me know if you don't hear her, okay? All right, Ms. Metz, go ahead. Well, first of all, Your Honor, I would like to just point out that uh, the material that was sent to you by Mr. Herrick's attorney, Joe Rayberger, uh, both those lawsuits were instituted by Mr. Herrick. And they were eventually settled after a great deal of consternation <clears throat> and discussion and compromise. Okay. The second thing I would like to show you 
is that I got this picture because I was sent the information that Mr. Ray Gruner sent to you. I got copies as well. Mm -hmm. And the one picture here shows the part of the part of the fence that fell down. Yep. And as you will notice, there is room on the easement to get around that. And Mr. Herrick's contention was that everything that he was doing was to, because I had blocked, you know, the report from the um, patrolman that came down that I called for after I had uh, experienced a very frightening episode where Mr. Herrick, may I approach you, sir? Sure. You will see that he has turned his front row front loader and is directly at, on onto my property and I am 10 feet away from him. And he is telling me that the next time you that my fence have, comes have down. a seat when you're, okay. yeah, that way everybody can hear. Okay. All right. uh, pick it up. Well, quite frankly, your honor, I don't think I would have been capable of picking it up in the first place. And in the second place, if he was so concerned about it, why was he picking it up and throwing it into my front yard? And let me tell you, when you've got a front end loader coming at you, it is terrifying. And that is why I asked for the protection order. Because obviously, Mr. Harry doesn't care about what the reactions of his actions towards me are. And I have, my husband and I have dealt with him for 20 odd years. And he moved in um, We've been there five years, maybe, when he moved in. He moved in, and the very practically the very first thing that he started complaining about to us was the speed bump that was in front of our home. We didn't put the speed bump in there, Your Honor. It was there when we moved in, and we didn't mind. But he minded, and he, you know, that was one of the issues that was in, I think, the first time he, uh, he, uh, um, sued us. Since all of this, I have spent several thousands of dollars and I have a brand new chain link fence that goes on my property down to not the end of my property, but the uh, where I have a second driveway that goes into the big barn. So that should solve the problem. But I am not in the least bit happy that, you know, with the thought that that should solve the problem because it won't, because even though this fence has posts that are anchored in concrete, I fully expect that he will come up with some idea of why he got to, had the right to, to damage or destroy the fence, which is what he did with our wood fence. I am 83 years old, Your Honor. I am a recent widow. I don't need this hassle. I've got enough to deal with. And that's why I asked for the protection order. I just want him to leave me alone. I never talked to him. I, we are prevented. The second one, the second order, we were prevented from being able to walk down to the end of the easement and look out at the water. That's fine with me because I don't want to go anywhere near him. I don't want to have anything to do with this man. And I want him to just leave me alone. And I don't know how else to get it in with the protection order. All right. Anything else, Ms. Metz? No, I think that's about covers it. Would you mark that as a defense exhibit? Okay. Mr. Rayberger, you want to present the case on behalf of Mr. Herrick? Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Joe Rayberger for Tom Herrick. Um, and Tom Herrick's um, also here on, on Zoom, as, as you made reference. Um, I just want to call the court's attention to some of the documents we submitted. I know you've had a chance to review them. We did, you know, initially... We submitted the incident report from the sheriff's department, which confirmed, you know, um, Dr. Herrick's position that the the fallen fence was blocking the roadway and that it was necessary to be removed for emergency access and vehicular vehicular access, and that there was no criminal activity. Hello. This is the loan. Yeah. Hello. Um, I'm not sure who's speaking. Whoever's just a second, Mr. Rayberger. Whoever's just called in, would you please mute your microphone until your case is called? Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. That happens. Um, All right, sorry, yeah. Mr. Rayberger. No problem. Uh, this is the loan access point for the Herrick family to reach their property. Um, you know, I, Tom can attest to this, but he hasn't um, 
He's never been on the Metz's property other than the easement that transverses it. He has, doesn't approach Mrs. Metz or talk with her. She's the one that came out and confronted him when he was out clearing the easement. You know, the pictures we showed, you know, the not just of the fallen fence, but then also the, the fence was in disrepair. You know, there's pictures we showed, I think we noted in exhibit four from 2013, there were other portions of a fallen fence. Um, Dr. Herrick didn't, didn't damage or remove the fence. You know, he just removed it out of the easement and placed it on the property. You know, I think the your honor might get a picture of this case. I mean, it's it's aged, but there is a long history which we don't dispute between the parties. Um, you know, there there has been in the past lawsuits between the parties. Um, those have resulted in anti harassment orders being entered against the Metzes and in favor of the Herrick family. Um, these were by, you know, retired Judge Hicks and then extended by Judge Pomeroy and then Judge McPhee. Um, petitioners Metzes have sought protection orders against the Herricks in the past, which have been denied. Um, with respect to the allegations in the petition itself about, you know, some of the prior history, the, you know, for example, the fence that had to be repainted, we submitted some photographs of those. While they claimed it was in relation to a re-election campaign, it also coincided with um, some terms of a settlement agreement the parties had reached, which had four more years left on it. And the fence was then painted bright orange with bright lettering, four more years, which, you know, only the Herricks drive by that easement. Um, you know, we haven't submitted, we, we could have submitted further documents from those cases, but um, you'll see in, for example, the injunction order that was issued by Judge McPhee back in 2012, talked about requiring the Metzes to remove further obstructions from the easements, not place further instruction, obstructions within the easements. We just don't see anything here that would indicate any sort of basis for an anti-harassment order against the Herricks um, or Tom Herrick. Um, and as the history shows here, all the prior cases have resulted in anti-harassment orders against the Metzes. And there's been sort of a continual, um, a continual theme along those lines. Um, we, anyway, I'll, uh, Tom, would you like to say anything if, if, if you'd like to address the court or if you want to be sworn in first, but I, yes. I think we'd, we'd ask your, your honor to dismiss the petition. Okay, go ahead, sir. Um, I, you know, I just like to say that first of all, she came out, I was removing the fence from the easement and they've had a long history of blocking the easement. The fence was sat there all day. It was difficult. My wife and daughter were leaving that morning. Um, they couldn't, yeah, we cleared a path around it so they could get out. Uh, and then when we came home at, uh, I left a little later in the morning. We came home at about six o'clock at night. The fence was still there uh, in the roadway. Um, I went up and removed it. That's true. Um, she came out and confronted me. I was not ever on her property. I didn't approach her. Uh, I didn't get off. Uh, the mini excavator um uh, and i removed the fence from the uh, the easement um i didn't even she initiated i mean she was yelling at me um i asked her why she didn't re, uh, remove the fence and she said why should i and, and that's the kind of um just the attitude that they've had uh, for a long time i mean you can if you look at the the previous stuff um and not only us, but other neighbors have had issues uh, with them for a long time. Um, and that's, uh, but I've never been on their property. I've never approached her. I've never initiated a conversation with her. Um, she had came out, was yelling at me. Why was I removing the fallen down fence from the driveway? Um, I mean, that's, that, that's the situation. Uh, she can kind of skew it like, oh, she's this poor widow, but they have had trouble with everybody that's lived around them for years. Um, and that, that's kind of the situation, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. I've reviewed all the uh, exhibits that have been received, um, considered the testimony that's been offered from the beginning with the initial petition to the testimony that I've heard here today. And Actually, my initial impressions of this have changed very little. Um, there was no basis to issue an anti-harassment order when this was filed. Um, there's still been no basis demonstrated. Um, the activity that's claimed to be harassment is, in my view, under the totality of the circumstances that are presented here, simply ordinary usage of an easement. I think anyone who has an easement for ingress and egress has the right to keep it clear. And any party whose estate is burdened with an easement has an obligation to keep it clear. And I, I can't interpret this as anything other than Mr. Herrick removing an obstruction on an easement, which even if there wasn't a settlement agreement between the parties, it apparently specifically allows that. A person who has um, a dominant uh, 
easement would be allowed to do that regardless if it were obstructing their use of, of their easement. So uh, there, there's just nothing here that constitutes any kind of harassment. It, easements are often a source of friction between people. And I see many, many cases where people uh, come to court where their dispute is over an easement. Um, this one is a little different in the sense that the parties have been to court before and had their rights settled, but it, it, nothing about it constitutes uh, harassment. That's an entirely different thing, pattern and course of conduct directed at a specific person. And that's not what this is. So I'm, I'm going to find that um, harassment has not been proved by a preponderance of the evidence. Um, and I will dismiss the petition. The truth, the whole Thank truth, you, Your Honor. About the truth. Thank yes, you. Your Honor. Yes. Okay. So, Mr. Lazen, you are uh, the petitioner in this case, and you get to go first. So, go right ahead. Okay. And I might have to. My chihuahua only barks at the worst time. So, if he starts to bark too loud, I'll, I'll go put him in the room. Um, so, just, just to let you know, I, I do suffer from uh, generalized anxiety. So, <clears throat> things like this. It, you know, give me great anxiety. So please be um, patient with me as far as me trying to to let you know what's going on. Um, so I've lived at Quartzsite Apartments, uh, which is on the yeah, west side of Olympia. I've lived here, moved in in 2018. Um, my, my, I'm a single mother. So my, my, my son was uh, four when we moved in. Okay. So now he's He's nine. Anyway, I, I say that because I did include him in, in the paperwork as a minor. Um, unfortunately, over the last six years of living at Quartzsite, it has been horrific in so many ways, but I won't go into detail on all of those things. Um, however, I do believe I live on the third floor uh, above two of the most um, uh, violent criminals that you could live above. Um, now I've worked with the police department. Um, there's not really working with the management here. The management doesn't do anything, but I will try to stay specific as much as I can to, to Yoana. Um, basically I really at this point just need to be left alone and my son needs to be left alone. That includes her hanging her head out her window. Um, constantly I'm saying, horrific things that I would not say right now uh, to everyone because they're so offensive to the point where I have, you know, witnesses from my church who come visit me. We're talking delivery people, anybody, you know, I'm on the third, she's on the second and it's just constant um, harassing of either me and my son or somebody that's visiting us. And again, that includes horrific language, but what I really want to, share with you today because when it is Joanna's turn to talk I mean you know all you can do in this case it's like he said she said right that's why it took me six years to file this I worked with um 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 sergeant sergeant Henriksen of the OPD and he was the one who who convinced me to finally do restraining order because yeah because it's been six years of this but I, I have to add it and then I'm I will be done <laughs> But uh, the worst part of it all, and this started from the beginning of, of like six years ago moving in, is for whatever reason, and like I said, she can say whatever she wants when she talks to you, but all I can say is, you know, this is lies, is the, the worst lie out of all the lies she's ever said to anyone about me is spreading a horrible, dangerous, uh, dangerous um, statement, uh, letting my neighbors in court side who aren't that, you know, are dangerous anyway, letting or telling them that I'm racist. And I want to say no from the bottom of my heart. Okay. I grew up, I, I did grow up in a educated home. I went to college point being like, I, I don't have a racist bone in my body. And, and I say that because it's important because number two, I have never once used the N word in my entire life. I don't even, I think that is so wrong. And now what you want to has done, and I won't go into all the specifics, but she uh, went to my place of work years ago to tell my manager that I, I'm racist and I say the N-word. So that was crazy. And then over the last year or so, she's done it so much that I've gotten assaulted because of it. 
And then um, and we can, I know this is a separate case, but I just want you to know she is linked with Daryl Cooper. Okay. I know he's not present. He's the other protection order. And, and that was very serious because he, you know, opened the door and said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to beat your ass. I'm sorry to swear. Um, and so that's when Officer Hendrickson's like, no, enough, enough. You know, he threatened your life. You need to take a protection order. And then that's when I asked him about Ioana. I said, because Daryl Cooper happens to be an African-American. And um, when Ioana is spreading these lies, whether she believes it's true or not, what I'm telling you, uh, Judge, is very dangerous for where me and my son live. We've gotten told, oh, I hope you fall off the balcony and die. Um, it, it, it's just so scary. At the end of the day, um, I'm going to do my best, you know, to try to move from courtside as it's a very scary place to live. As a single mom with a nine-year-old, my son has seen, and I will end it with this. And this is why I'm scared, physically, okay, uh, emotionally, of Joanna McGowan is on September 30th, and I believe it's still an ongoing case. She, there was attempted murder of my neighbor who I shares walls with. I had to take video footage of this because my apartment manager, oh, did you get it on video? Anyway, I have PTSD from what I saw that night. She basically almost bludgeoned this man to death. And I have, yeah, footage. The cops were working with me. Anyway, it was horrific. But the worst part is that my son had to witness it. Just like, you know, I'm not going to talk about the Daryl Cooper stuff right now, but just like what's going on with him. So at the end of the day, all I want, and I, I know I know she will get on here and say, horrible things about me she she has from the beginning but i would think she would agree with me when it comes to let like she doesn't we don't want each other in our lives so all i want is yeah to be left alone not be yelled at out the window not her harassing you know my friends my my church and delivery people just leave us alone and especially and i'll end it i'll say please and please do not talk to my child that's my child and he's scared of this woman. So all I can say is I I have gone back and forth with how I've been treated. So meaning sometimes I'm like, oh, should I, you know, yell back and engage? I don't think that's a good idea. Sometimes I've, you know, had enough. I'm like, just want them to leave me alone. But for the most part, I try to just ignore, ignore, ignore. And then it just continues to happen. So Anyway, I do think she is a dangerous person, and and I I just I really think the protection order will be necessary. And Officer Henriksen said, you know, yes, she could get she could get mad or something, but at the end of the day, it protects you because if and when she does harass you uh, verbally, uh, she, then there's something there, right, on file that I can call and say this is what happened. Um, and so anyway, that that's it was Officer Henderson who told me who convinced me to do this. So um, that's all I have to say. And then, like I said, uh, whatever she says, it's going to be I would love to mute, mute it because I've heard all the lies she said about me and they're horrific. So she's probably going to go ahead and, and do that. But I but I, it's like, stop, stop. You know, do, you, you're calling me racist in a, in a neighborhood that is very unsafe for people to think you're racist. So. Um, I, I, I am very, I, I don't want to live, I'm trying to move, but until then, I don't want to be a sitting duck, or I don't want to be scared, and my, my son is so scared, by the way, and just, just the other night, Nuana was standing outside, you know, like her arms crossed, staring at us, as we were going to, you know, parallel park, and my son's like shaking, crying, mom, 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 can you, can you please park somewhere else, mom, 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 can you please, can we please go somewhere else, until she goes away. So anyway, I just I just want her to leave us alone, and that's all. All right, Miss McGowan, how are you doing this morning, Your Honor? Um, okay, um, I do not disagree with the protective order. I would actually like one myself. I have reached out to my apartment complex for years, trying to get Mary's last name. I was told due to HIPAA laws by my manager that she wasn't able to give me that information. I wasn't privileged to a fashion to be able to get her last name. I have been trying to get a protective order against her for years to stop the harassment against me. We were told by our apartment manager to just put take videos of any incidents that were involving her. As a matter of fact, everybody in the community has been doing it. She's actually a 
used her First Amendment right to picket the apartments. The apartment manager reported that, called the Olympia Police Department to see if there was anything that they could do about her and her derogatory comments on her poster board as she was picketing. I am not a violent person. The case that she's mentioning with Casey, he assaulted me in my house. I defended myself. He has charges that are pressed against him for two assaults. Um, all I want to do is to have a comfortable, peaceful life. I'm not harassing her. I have went through the community and got multiple letters of witnesses that see her kicking my door to set my dogs off on purpose. The security guard that she mentioned in her paperwork, I have a video of her cursing and screaming at him because she wanted him to tell me to close my window in the summer. And it was hot. Um, me sticking my head out the window is not to harass her. It's to stick my head out the window and get some fresh air. Um, by no means am I trying to harass this woman. I am totally in agreement with the protective order. I would just like it to be a two-way street so that she doesn't have this order and feel as though she can continue to harass me and try to put me in a position to be in trouble. The last thing I want is to have any legal difficulties. And so I would appreciate if this protective order was in effect, but both ways. So she can no longer contact me, harass me, or make her derogatory remarks regarding me and my household. I'm also a single mother. And it was just three weeks ago, Your Honor, she was outside saying, well, that's why your daughter got murdered, trying to instate some kind of reaction in me so that she could get what she wanted, which was a reaction. And that's what I'm not giving her. And that's upset her even more, I think. But I don't appreciate being persecuted and falsely accused of heinous crimes and called a convict and a criminal. And regardless of how she feels about this community, I live here and I, I enjoy my life here. And I don't think it's such a bad neighborhood. And if need be, Your Honor, I do have these letters and video evidence that I could bring to the court. I was wanting to come to the courthouse today for this hearing, but I saw in the paperwork it said I just needed to do the Zoom. But I'm more than willing to bring whatever I have to Your Honor so that I could also get a protective order. Okay. Then um, what I am going to do is I'm going to I am going to grant the order. And uh, Ms. McGowan, um, if you would like to petition for your own order, you're certainly uh, welcome to do that. Thank you, Your Honor, because now I have her last name. That was all that I needed to be able to file myself. So, yes. Like, yeah, you said it. You can you can bring those things to the court and file them yourself. You, you know uh, where the courthouse is and the court clerks will take that from you. But for now, I'm going to issue the order that uh, Ms. Gilvezen's requested, and that uh, is just going to extend for the next year until March 25th of 2025. It's the same terms and conditions as the original order. Okay, and Your Honor, and, um, I just have one favor to ask, please, sir. Could you let her know that this order does not give her permission to harass me? Okay, well, I, I think she just heard you. Okay, that, that's what I really wanted her to know. This protection order works two ways. Just, I want it, but that doesn't allow you to harass me or to try to put me in a position to get in trouble because you can't speak to me either. That means you can't be within 100 feet of me either. Miss yeah, Ms., Ms., uh, McGowan, I think you probably need to save that for your own case. Yes. So um, that'll conclude your case for today, Ms. McGowan. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. And then, and is there a time? Limit? I, what's that? Is there a time limit for me to get the paper, my nope. stuff together? Okay. You can do that. You can do that anytime you want. The courthouse is open every day. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Same um, procedure as before. Uh, Ms. Penn, you get to go first. Uh, keep in mind that uh, everything that you previously filed in this case is already part of the record, and I'm familiar with it. Okay. okay, so go right ahead. Um, we were in a relationship. There was a history of domestic violence. I was out of the country and <laughs> on my way traveling home. And he was just blowing up my phone with threatening messages saying if my house wasn't connected to someone else, he was going to burn it down. He reached out and harassed my neighbors. I, I don't feel safe. There is a history of domestic violence. A pretty extensive record at that. Can I ask you um, the 
in your petition, you refer to prior domestic violence orders. Are any of those orders still in effect? No, uh, no, because I, stu- I was stupid. I came back and was like, oh, I don't need it. And mm-hmm. then it would happen again. And he would say, oh, it's not going to happen again. So, I, I mean, I have photos of bruises okay. all over. He's destroyed my great grandmother's dining table. It, it's just, <clears throat> it's not safe for me. We have no ties whatsoever. Okay. Is there anything else you want to say in addition to what you've already told me in writing, so to speak? Not that I could think of. Okay. Just Mr. Armstrong. Yes, Your Honor. What would you like to tell me? Okay. She's contacted me about getting uh, the divorce finalized. Okay. And she asked me, Your Honor, she says, uh, Give me two hundred dollars, so that way uh, you, you can go half with me, and um, and I'll get the uh, I'll I'll file the divorce. I said okay. No, Your Honor, I had no idea that she was going out of town. I had no idea. Okay, and I I to my better judgment, you know, I I gave her the benefit of the doubt, you know, and 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 gave her the money. I sent her the money, and I say probably about. Two or three weeks, four weeks went past, and um, and she never did anything. She never, you know, and come to find out, she went out of town, you know, and I'm pretty sure she used the money to to uh, to do whatever, you know, and and she wasn't living up to her word on that. And um, not only that, you know, uh, uh, we had I had purchased a car from her. Okay, I gave her forty six hundred dollars for this car. And um, and it was a verbal agreement. Of course, she has a ledger of you know I paid her money for this car, you know, and I used the car faithfully. Uh, <clears throat> and so something told me to go out there that day, and I went out there and and I went to the courthouse to see if she would she had filed for the divorce, and she and and come to find out she never did. And I mean, I went past her house. I text. Uh, neighbor you know we were we're still pretty cool you know and um and i just asked him about the car that was that was it um as far as me threatening her um i will never hurt her or any of her family okay first and foremost um i was upset um um granted you know i i shouldn't have done that and i apologize to to her and i i uh, actually i apologized that same time in frame you know uh, when i when i sent those messages uh anyway your honor um i just you know i'm i'm just overwhelmed with you know uh uh the fact that you know i do i have bent over backwards for her and um and i I'm just trying to move on, man. All right. Um, it, you know, it, unlike other cases I've heard today, there's there's prior history here between these two parties. And I have sure. seen, because I can check the records, uh, I, I've seen that there have been prior criminal cases. There have been prior domestic violence orders uh, issued in, the, in those cases. Um, I've reviewed, of course, the petition that Ms. Penn filed and the allegations that are in there regarding the threats of harm, which some of which she recounts here today. Um, I find that that those allegations are credible. Uh, I think a reasonable person in Ms. Arms, in, in Ms. Penn's position would feel threatened by those statements, uh, especially given the overall history that has been described by by Ms. Penn and the history that's uh, on record here in the court system. Um, those acts, those threats to do harm, to harm the property of Ms. Penn are themselves acts of domestic violence. Uh, I'm finding by preponderance of the evidence based on the testimony here today that they occurred and they provide a basis for uh, issuing the order that Ms. Penn is requesting. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to put that order in place uh, for a period of two years. domestic violence protection order is in effect for the next two years from today's date, March 25th, 2026. Uh, the court clerk will file that today and you'll both have access to that order. So I can get copies. You can get a copy right now. Oh, so okay. you're here. Thank yeah. you, Your Honor. 
it'll be filed electronically and Mr. Armstrong can get that uh, from the court clerk anytime. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so Ms. Uh, Roden, uh, you get to go first, go right ahead. Okay, um, her dad has been my best friend for like almost 40 years. And I moved in about growing up four years ago out in Dakota with him. <laughs> my boyfriend take, tells him to take care of dad and, until he passed away. They've been out there almost four years and we haven't had any problems whatsoever. About six months ago, Ron went to Oregon, which is her dad. He went to Oregon to see his um, baby's mama and for the weekend and whatnot. And he did a he had a stroke while he was up there or something. And I ended up having to get a ride up to Oregon so that I could drive him home because he couldn't get home himself. And since then, his his memory's been really bad. He's dizzy all the time. He didn't go back and forth to the doctors and stuff. But like he's got some dementia or something coming on. So the last six months is and it's slowly getting worse as for remembering stuff and you know what we talk about paying bills and stuff like that well sierra mm -hmm. she hasn't been around been, she hasn't been allowed out there after dad died because she steals it from out there it's been years after dad died she didn't even come out there after her granddad died she showed up a couple months ago she shows up about the first her dad gets paid whatnot they do whatever it's not my business okay i don't care but I had been babysitting for my son for the last month and a half because he'd been having some problems with his wife. So I've been over there and I come, I haven't been at the house much. I come home maybe twice a week or something. And uh, I just seen some of my stuff hanging out of her, out of her bag in the kitchen. So I told you, I, you read it. I folded it up and I put it on the table. She, you know, let her that way she could see I had found it. She came in the next morning and she, she put it in a bag and she took it out to her vehicle. If she hadn't done that, I would have never even went out to her vehicle and I would have never found all the other stuff that was in there. My, I have to move anyway. When Ron moved me out there, it was, he told me I wasn't going to have to move again, but because of the way things are going and whatnot, I realized that I have to move, but we live paycheck to paycheck. He works nights. He's been working on trucks. He's got motors pulled out there. We have animals out there. We don't even have the money to move, let alone somewhere to move to. So it's going to take time. And I just don't think that her being there, with as much stuff that I took out of her vehicle that was mine, it was ridiculous. I didn't dawn on me that she's had all this time to just randomly go through everything in the house. It didn't dawn on me until we got into her truck. Now, a couple of days before this, her dad had asked, asked me about a can of copper that was in his room. I quit going in his room months ago. I quit going in his room. I don't borrow his vehicle or anything because it, it's just his memory is just so bad that it's always issues there's always some issue with it he doesn't believe anything we say anymore he doesn't he doesn't feel right because he knows that he's dizzy all the time and they can't find out what's wrong with him and i get all that but the way that he's changed and changed the way he treats me he's been my best friend for almost 35 years i mean minus all the stuff that she took i'm, I'm losing my best friend over this you know what i mean and i just don't think that having to live with her and be there while i'm trying to I have to leave people at the house because I'm scared to leave my leave the house without somebody being there. Um, I take care of people for a living. I have a gentleman that I take care of. I've had it out there. She's been rude. She's disgusting. She doesn't clean up. We laid new carpet. Her dog peed all over it. She. Right. Let me uh, ask you a couple questions here. Is is Miss Yeager living there now? No. She had been. He. She'd been there for a couple weeks. Until. So she left. But yeah, so she's living elsewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's been, yeah, she's been homeless or living out wherever. So you basically don't want her coming around because not while you're I'm there. Worried that she's taking stuff. Not while I'm there. I mean, okay. she. I mean, she. I got one thing back, and that was because somebody had seen it in my house, and she had had it in town, mm -hmm. and I, they gave it back to my kid and brought it back to me, and that's because she thought it was Jade, and it's actually just a a green stone, but they're two dragons that I had in my entertainment center. Well, she took one because she thought it was Jade. He he brought it back to my kid. My kid brought it back to me. That's the only thing that I've gotten back. She took, she came in and took the Xbox. I'm missing a laptop. I mean, it, it's. All right. Well, let me hear from Miss Yeager and I'll sure. make a decision. Okay. All right, Miss Yeager. Um, yeah. Ms. Yeager, would you like to tell me your side of it? Um, I've been out there for more than just a couple weeks. I've been out there for a couple months, actually. And my aunt Bonnie's the one that put me out there because my dad had a stroke. Um, and I just shouldn't be on the streets. The only reason why I haven't even been there is because I got served these papers and I got, you know, told that I couldn't even be at home. You know, 
the last 10 days, I haven't even known if my dad's even gotten his medication or gotten fed. Um, they cooked in front of my dad, ate the pizza in front of my dad, didn't even offer him anything to eat. My truck has been stolen. They have not, I've not gotten a retrieval. Um, my mom has actually literally, um, uh, actually, uh, reported it stolen, um, with the Olympia police department and, the, uh, t uh, the, um, Tenino police department and it has not been retrieved. So they either sold it for drugs or got rid of it in some way or another, because that's what they do. <laughs> um, I have my dog. Um, she doesn't, she, you know, she's just a baby. Um, their dog has literally bit me. Um, I have this scar right here to, to even prove it. Um, I have paperwork with the hospital uh, in Centralia. Um, their dog has also bitten my fa my father and my uncle that have lives outside outside the house. Um, it's where my uncle doesn't even come inside the house anymore. Like my dad doesn't my dad doesn't get why my uncle doesn't come in the house other than the dog. Um, yeah, his memory is a little bit messed up, but he drives himself back and forth to my aunt Bonnie's and back home every weekend. So there is nothing wrong with his memory that bad. All I know is that every time that I would come home, her daughter-in-law, Kimmy, would be stealing my shit. The shit that I did get, um, I got from her daughter-in-law, is stuffed, okay? And if any of her stuff was in there, then she needs to talk to Kimmy about it, okay? I am the only one that fucking took from Kimmy. I didn't take from her personally, and if I did, I would have given it back. But she broke into my truck and then stole it and then fucking... I don't even know where it's at, so... Ms. Eager, you got you've got to watch your language. That's not appropriate court language. Sorry. Okay, so you're not you're not living in the same place as Miss Rodin. No, I was, but since I got served those papers, I haven't been able to be at home. And they were asked to leave because of the dog. My dad has to have a in home caregiver, and they can't be there with their animals, especially with how dangerous they are. All right. All right. Thank you. Yep. And initially, when this case was filed, I didn't issue an order. I was concerned that there were reasons not to do that. I, mean, I guess maybe two basic reasons. One is that I didn't think the petition really alleged harassment. I think that the petition alleges another kind of conflict between the parties that has more to do with who's going to be responsible or who's going to have access to dad, who's going to have access to personal property and, um, you know, the, the, the court in an anti-harassment case can't uh, make those kind of decisions. It's not that kind of case. So I, I don't, I, I didn't find then when this petition was filed and I, and I still don't find now that there's harassment going on. There's a different kind of conflict going on, but it's not a harassment issue. So there's nothing that the court can do or order that's going to, that would be appropriate here. Um, any dispute that you have over, you know, who's allowed to have access to dad or who's allowed to have access to property, um, who gets what? Those sorts of things have to be resolved in a different way. They can't be resolved like this. So um, <clears throat> the petition was never granted. There, there will not be a petition now. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, so that will yeah, do uh, it for today. Ms. Ortiz Hernandez, um, when you were not here before, I dismissed your case. Um, did they dismiss it? Um, there, it was a temporary order that was granted. But we didn't email her. Yeah. Marks, so you just have to tell her that. So you, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Um, well, she doesn't understand because she was given. Uh, they they served uh, Juan Pablo with a temporary restraining order, yes. and so she was under the understanding that she had court this morning for that. Yes, uh, court court was at nine o'clock, and oh. um, when I when I checked, uh, uh, Mr. Gutierrez was was here. We had the interpreters here for the hearing, but no, Miss Flor Ortiz Hernandez was not here, so the petition was dismissed. Oh yeah, um, unfortunately, she was given a paper where they circled courtroom number two, which she has right here. So she's been sitting in courtroom two until we called. Okay, let me. Do you have the notice? Or maybe it's maybe I could just pull it up here. So, yeah, it's it does say nine a.m. Yeah. Does say courtroom three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's some confusion between her initial um, 
the initial uh, hearing where she asked for the order in today's hearing. So um, unfortunately, I can't just unwind this. Uh, Mr. Gutierrez Martinez was present and he was given notice that the petition was dismissed. So if you still want an order, you're going to have to initiate a new petition. Okay. In other words, file again um, and explain, you know, what the confusion was so that we know, you know, why it is it's, it's here again. Okay. All right. Yes. I will make sure so, she understands that. Okay. Yeah. Stuff like that can happen sometimes if, if, if there's confusion, but you know, we, you can get the case going again. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right.